Bell is joining us from Fig Securities. Simon, U.S. yields are pulling back from recent highs. We're actually watching the curve flattening, though. How much of that has to do with some of the economic data we had out in the U.S. last night, which we haven't really talked a lot about? Look, that's right, absolutely, Nadine. And uh, it's really interesting because we've had that huge surge in uh, yields on, in the US driven by uh, increased inflation expectations. And where the curve settled is really interesting. It's about 10 basis points right across the 2, 10 and the 30 year, below where it was just after the last tightening by the Fed in December last year. So uh, we definitely have seen uh, some flattening out. If you have a look at uh, comparing Aussie and US, our 10 year rates are now only 40 basis points different. Um, and that's very, very tight as well. So that shows you the significance of that movement in the uh, US yields. So we have some conflicting views when it comes to uh, this bond route, if we call it that, that's happened in the wake of the US election. We've got Bill Gross saying that, you know, it's all been overdone. Uh, but then we have Ray Dalio from Bridgewater saying that, look, this is a paradigm shift and that uh, the story is going to continue. Where do you sit on that spectrum? Look, it's interesting. I think, you know, there's been some fairly uh, substantial reaction and a lot of that's been driven by expectations of what's likely to happen policy-wise out of the US. I mean, a lot of this is speculation at this stage and I think, uh, you know, considering that the curve has basically just come back up to where we started the year, uh, you know, it's not as if we've moved, you know, with any um, exuberance beyond that. Um, you know, this could, you could easily see this reverse back as well over time if, uh, you know, expectation doesn't meet reality. So, uh, you know, I think at this stage people are trying to sort of guess. They're certainly building in some inflation expectation. That's being reflected in uh, a greater demand for inflation protected securities. But look, I think in my view, I'd, I'd like to see a little bit more play out and uh, a little bit more certainty around whether some of these uh, expectations will actually uh, play out in reality as we move into next year. How is this all impacting, I guess, uh, Australian bond yields? Well, obviously, as the chance of a US Fed move in December has increased from around 68% at the beginning of the month to now, I think we're at about 94%, uh, that certainly takes a bit of pressure off the RBA. The RBA would be very happy to see the US move their rates up, take a bit of pressure off of our dollar by lowering that um, comparative value. Uh, that Aussie yields have uh, in comparison to US. So I think if we get that move, that takes a bit of pressure off and that's been reflected in uh, Aussie rates, which also uh, have moved up substantially. The two year are now around 1.75. OK, just quickly, any really interesting domestic bond issuances happening now? Well, I have seen in the paper that a couple of IPOs have been pulled. We're certainly not seeing that in the bond market and we've had ANZ issue $3 billion of senior bonds in the US dollars uh, in the last 24 hours. We've seen Toyota Australia stepping up to do a bit of issuance as well. So certainly some good demand for yields and it's not slowing down the issuance we're seeing in the bond market, uh, Nadine. All right. Well, better get, let you get back to it then, Simon. Thank you. Have a good day. Simon Michelle there joining us from Fig Security. So my guest